Our next speaker, Rafal, has a lot to say, so I won't take up any more time and just give it to him. Thank you. Oh, does it work? Okay. Let's wait until my slides will pop out, I guess. Oh. Would there be anything there? Excellent. Thank you. Uh, so welcome to my talk. Thank you for being here. Uh, that's my second time in Belgrade. I'm really glad I'm here for the Cape Conf. And let's go straight to my talk. I'm Rafał Legins, and I'm going to talk about our journey. That's actually, um, I think it's starting uh, our transition from the flatland to spaceland. And what that means is um, since the very beginning when we got our, uh, our personal devices or computers, uh, so it's like, what, maybe 30, 40 years now, uh, the way we interacted with whatever digital content we had on, on those devices was through the 2D screens. And whether we were just using text or free content, whatever we were interacting with was the 2D projection to the screen. And I think, and if you notice, what are the moves uh, out there in the industry, it's pretty apparent that right now we're shifting uh, more and more towards 3D interactions and spatial computing. And that's what this session is about, meaning we'll see what the big companies are doing to deliver us this and how much they're invested into that. And a little bit about myself. I'm Rafael Leggins, as I said. You can find me on the internet at Rafek. And I'm a software engineer and, um, and the manager for mixed reality team at Transition Technologies PSC in Poland. I'm also in Microsoft MVP in the mixed reality um, area. And also I'm an organizer of a DEF CONF conference in Poland. I usually start with a slide and an explanation of what augmented reality is and what virtual reality is. Because even though we have those technologies out there on the market for quite a while, there is still a lot of confusion. Uh, and um, I noticed that many times whenever I'm talking to someone, someone from the business or a peer engineer, um, they usually, I mean, it happens that people refer to AR, but they think about VR and vice versa. So long story short, um, VR would be the virtual reality and that would be the experience where the whole physical natural world that is around the user is being occluded by the glasses of some sort that we have. And you can't see anything that is in the real world and whatever you're seeing is basically the is uh, the rendered reality. It's artificial world and you feel really immersed into that. So you can probably, probably saw those funny videos on the internet uh, where someone is playing some VR game is being poked by a third person and is freaking out, right? Because the person playing virtual reality game feels really immersed into that artificial environment. And on the other hand, we have augmented reality, uh, which we can experience in many flavors. Uh, one could, and augmented reality would be overlaying digital content on top of the physical world. And we can interact and we can experience that in many ways, meaning first we can use our mobile phones, Android or iOS, and just looking through the phone and the camera feed would be uh, on our screens and then on top of that camera feed would be 3D content rendered. And uh, the simplest example would be um, the Facebook uh, face masks, right? In augmented reality. You all probably saw that and experienced that. On the other hand, we have all sorts of augmented reality glasses or headsets where you put your the headset on and then your vision is not occluded, you can see everything that is around you, and then some 3D content is being rendered on top of that. And also we have a mixture of VR and AR, which is called pass-through AR, which means it's something like a virtual reality headset, but then there are color cameras, and on those, um, on the, um, displays within the headset, we have the pass-through video stream, and then on top of that is digital content rendered. So then we move on and let's see what are, the, what are the things in that area that the biggest companies on the market do. Let's start with Facebook or Meta. So they, in 2019, I think that slide is from 2019 from Facebook Connect, 
they said they're working on the AR glasses. And we have 2022 right now, and they still haven't done it, but the journey they're taking is uh, pretty interesting uh, because long time ago they, they, um, they acquired Oculus, which you probably know, it's uh, one of the most popular VR headset vendor. And what they did is they iterated and created Oculus Quest based on the technology they acquired and they created a chip-ish VR, oh, hold on, there was a sound also here. Uh, yeah. And they created um, the VR headset that was affordable and good quality where they kept adding new features on and on, like for example, hand tracking, which was unprecedented before that within the VR experience, so that you can actually get rid of your controllers and then just use your hands within this virtual reality uh, experience. How many of you have tried Oculus Quest already? Not that much, so it's still not very common, but what they did next was they iterated it even more and they released Oculus Quest 2, which is called right now Meta Quest 2. And then they released something which is called Quest Pro, which is like the super new headset that was released like half of the month ago. And what's very interesting thing here is that they iterated it even more what they had before. And they, for example, added like new kind of lenses and also, which was also not uh, done by anyone else, mixed reality in a, col in a colorful way, meaning that you actually have this VR headset and you can switch between VR and AR because of those good cameras and computing power that they have. So it's still not like proper AR glasses, but they're really close to that. Next would be... Um, Microsoft and HoloLens, HoloLens 1 and HoloLens 2. Actually, Microsoft started working on augmented reality stuff a uh, long time ago. They, it, it all started with uh, Microsoft Kinect. Do you, are you all familiar with Kinect? It's an old technology already. It was released with, along with Xbox 360. And it was Kinect 1, Kinect 2, then HoloLens 1, then Kinect for Azure, and then HoloLens 2. And this is basically a self-contained uh, computing units so that you, you don't connect it anywhere and those are basically holographic glasses or augmented reality glasses and the experiences that you can get on those kind of glasses is like this so this is a video from the mixed reality toolkit uh, toolkit with all the components that helps us that help us creating uh, mixed reality experiences for uh, HoloLens and iOS and Android devices. Have you ever tried HoloLens one or two? Nice two people. I did have my HoloLens glasses here in Belgrade in 2017. Not sure if anyone met me then. No. And this is um, this is actually one of the best experiences out out there right now. So you can actually see what's around us. We detect all the planes and surfaces and we can put digital content and actually place it somewhere in our vicinity. And this is a Windows machine. So basically we write the Unity, uh, Unity programs for uh, Windows to, for that. Next would be Apple. Apple actually, they, they, they keep saying that they're working on AR glasses, but it's as Apple, they probably will wait until everyone will have uh, some sort of augmented reality device, uh, head mounted augmented reality device, and then they're gonna release their own. And they will say they, were, they just invented augmented reality, right? But the thing is, if you look at what they keep delivering, is that they surely work on augmented reality and the, the, the best example is that I think they have the, the most um, 
the most device the most devices out there in the world that support augmented reality because every single iPhone basically is an augmented reality device right now and with their technology called AR kit which is like a six iteration right now they they already I mean they actually developers because that's the kit for developers so we can deliver on the apps like iPad, that a woman walks through a lift for iOS devices. So if you look here, for example, this is a nice thing. The digital thing, like those chests here, can include a, a physical person which is moving, which is not a very trivial problem to solve. And then that person can occlude the digital thing. So it all feels like it's being placed in the physical place. <clears throat> then. Uh, only using the cameras on the on the phone, we can we can do motion capture, for example. And then we can do light estimation, cast shadows, detect surfaces. So the immersion level is even higher, right? Because we can place things on our real table, and it lives on that table. And then Google, well, Google, you probably can remember, they released Google Glasses in 2011. Who remembers that? It was hyped really badly on the internet and everyone expected it's, it's going to change the world. But apparently it was like way too early, like 10 years too early because the technology wasn't there and the people weren't ready for that. So the project was kind of killed for not that long period of time, but then um, but then uh, Google basically started working on the very similar thing that Apple has, which is called AR Core, which basically is the very similar thing that I've just shown you for, but, but for the Android devices. And maybe it's a little bit more uh, poorer when, when you compare it to the Apple product. And then there are many more vendors when it comes to the augmented reality and virtual reality glasses. If you would Google for it, you would find hundreds of them, all sorts of glasses with um, different like scenarios where, where you would use them. The, the other interesting um, approach for augmented reality is something just called assisted reality. I mean, there are several terms for that, but sometimes we refer it as assisted reality to glasses where where you don't um, render 3D content around you, but you have basically a video stream in front of your eyes or an eye and you're not uh, immersed into that but you basically have like a small display in front of your eye and then on display display you can display the camera feed and then draw on top of that so it's kind of a mixture between um, regular screen and some 3d which is some sometimes being referred as 2.5d devices which is for example this which is called um, real, wear, uh, real Wear Smart Glasses. And also there are companies like uh, Mojo Vision, which, uh, who uh, do work on uh, yet another approach to augmented reality, which is basically um, contact lenses. Then if you look at the market, which is, this slide is very interesting for, for us as developers, is that if you, if you would look at the, um, the potential in the market, where the money is when it comes to VR and AR, um, well, the green part is, um, is kind of self-explanatory and we know it's, it's kind of obvious that video games and video entertainment on VR is, uh, is out there for some time already. But the other part, uh, which is like the other industries is growing rapidly. So if you, if you think about augmented reality, uh, you can actually apply it in every single industry, like healthcare, engineering, real estate, retail, military, you name it. Um, so if you look at the statistics and uh, read about market needs, there are more and more companies that are investing into augmented reality for like training or um, user support, etc. So this is like um, new, kind of field or area for developers where we can jump on and start creating apps where there are basically no apps or very little. It's not like mobile market right now. And 
let's do a quick trip through the history of digital transformations because that's very crucial for the next next part of the presentation so if you uh, if we would look at how personal computing evolved and the first digital information was digital transformation was when we got our personal computers so what happened was that we started digitalizing stuff around us that was mainly text so we started entering text to our computers and persisting them so that was a big change then there was second digital transformation basically which meant we got guis and we got the internet and some of you who are um, a little uh, my age or or older probably remember that that was that was a big change because all of a sudden we got access to some data that is like spread around the world and the use of the computer was easier because of the guis and then third digital transformation brought us mobile devices and social media and that's probably some, something that all of us remember we all remember probably the era before smartphones and before youtube and facebook right and we can actually look back and see how much how many things has changed after that transformation it took some some time right because at the very beginning of social media and smartphones we didn't know how it will evolve in 10 years because it's like last 10 or maybe 15 years that is happening right and we all know that it changed a lot and then uh, many experts in the in the area many uh, people working in the industry um, they started recognizing that all the new technologies that are out there they're kind of started forming this new um, new era or new digital transformation that will happen after what we have right now so all, with all the edge computing ar vr wearables cloud 5g ai it all boils down into new computing platform which is the fourth digital transformation where we would utilize more and more mixed reality apps and interact with data in a spatial way but it still feels I mean, I've just shown you that there are like many, many um, devices out there, many, many companies invested into that. But it still feels like, okay, I can play some game on the VR headset. I can use some word on, on some VR or AR headset. But it feels like being on the internet in the 90s. Like there were some sites, but it, it, it was not very, it was all not very, um, there was no uh, community. Uh, we weren't able to collaborate easily and create content within the internet back then. So in the way to connect all those experiences in VR and AR into one common thing that everyone would actually be able to collaborate and live and play, play in. And this is where the metaverse come into play. You probably hear, hear that buzzword a lot nowadays because even Facebook changed their name into meta to reflect that they're working and they're very invested into metaverse. But it's, um, it's not like there is one definition right now when it comes to metaverse. It's actually very vague. And every company, being, from being it from the entertainment industry or the industrial uh, or manufacturing industry, for example, they think about different things whenever they re refer to the metaverse. So there is not like one thing called metaverse right now or even one definition called metaverse because there are many flavors we can approach uh, many flavors of metaverse and many ways we can approach to it for example there could be a metaverse for ar experiences and experiences and there could be a metaverse for the vr experiences like ready player one for example if you read the book or watch the movie so other phrases that could uh, refer to the same thing as metaverse could be a digital twin, a uh, spatial web, or um, uh, AR cloud. So there are many definitions for that and many names for that. So if you hear metaverse and someone is saying like bad things about it, just don't fixate on it because he or she might be talking about one particular approach to the metaverse that he could think of. But still, it's a, um, it's a problem 
or a thing that we have to solve to actually move forward with all the AR and VR. And that new network, that, that metaverse thing, would be something like the internet, but a little bit more, because we would have more connections. We actually, with all the IoT data and, um, and wearables, we'll have like, everything connected together, not only websites. And again, we're going to show you 10 minutes left, I think. 10 or 6? OK, whatever. Uh, yeah, I think 6. So then again, um, I'm going to show you quickly what, are, what, what those big companies are working on when it comes to the metaverse, because um, it appears that every single one of them that, that I've just mentioned is also fully, fully um, invested into the metaverse thing. So I don't have to talk about much about Facebook, of course, because they even changed their name uh, to reflect that they, they're into it. And they're creating products like Horizon World, Horizon Workrooms. Uh, so those are the VR metaverses for entertainment and for work, for example. And even for uh, even with um, with the release of Quest Pro, uh, they shown they're gonna um, collaborate with Microsoft to create um, a, a new approach to working with like computer within the metaverse, and. Some time ago, I think two years ago, they released this kind of video. Not sure what, if, if they're working on it still, but it was interesting. So uh, that they try to build this digital twin of the world. To achieve this, Live Maps uses machine perception to construct multi layer representations of the world, showing where you are in space, recognizing what things look like, and understanding the intrinsic meaning of objects. Connected devices, like smartphones and AR glasses, will scan the surroundings to create a live dynamic index, amplified by crowdsourced data, allowing the maps to recognize when things have changed and update automatically. So if we would have a map like that, constantly updated, we would be able to actually enter any area and then place some content with our glasses or phones. So for example, I could be using my glasses and I could place something here on this stage and then you with any device that you would have, be it a phone or other glasses, you could look at this place and we would all know we are in the same area and you would see the same digital thing that would be standing here on this stage. And very similar problem uh, is being solved by Microsoft. They have Azure Spatial Anchors and this is a technology that you can actually use right now. And this is, cro cross, this is a cross-platform thing. So uh, that's one of the services on Azure. So basically, you can designate a point anywhere. And then based on this point, the point cloud is being created of the feature points around it. And it's all being uploaded to the, to the cloud. And then any other player or user can, if, 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 if he or she would be in the vicinity of this point, he or she could detect that point so that me and you will have the same point of reference in that 3D space. And then based on that, we can start drawing because we have this common point. So whatever we would render would be, um, would be in regards of this point. So we can experience the same digital content in the physical space. Then Apple is doing a very similar thing as well, which is called location anchors. Uh, but it's not like it's uh, unlocked for everyone and everywhere, but it's only unlocked in some certain cities. So we can use it in San Francisco, London, New York, etc. And Google, uh, they're actually the closest to, to having a digital twin of the world because they've taken so many pictures for Street View that they basically have the representation of the, of the world uh, on, their, on their servers. And based on that, they're actually utilizing it for navigation. If you'd use, um, if you'd use Google Maps on your phone and do the walking navigation, uh, there is this AR um, view mode that you can enable. And it then it uses the feature points of, of, of the area based on the street view data. And then it's even more um, accurate than the GPS because GPS is like several meters ac accuracy and then if you do the visual positioning system based on the feature points, which they have based on the street view data, uh, the accuracy is way better. 
Then within the company I work for, we, we create the Skillworks, which is the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the same thing that I've just shown, but for those devices which are lightweight and they do not deliver a full 3D capability. So basically, based, based on the camera feed, we send all those pictures, uh, all those um, frames to the cloud, and then based on those stream of the, of the frames, we detect feature points, and then you can place uh, anchors on those video, video feed or um, frames stream, and then stream it back to the, to, the, to the display. And then on the smaller device with less capability, you can have the spatial points anchored around, around your vicinity. And there are many other companies, uh, startups that are working on their own uh, approaches for the AR cloud. Okay, so the future would be like in altered carbon or not, but maybe sooner or later we will be able to, to, um, to draw our physical world with data so that we can interact with data in a more natural way for us, meaning in a spatial way, rather than just looking into 2D representation on our phones and tablets. And for the very last thing, uh, those are the books that are, are nice introductions to the topic about the fourth transformation and metaverse and spatial web and how we can augment ourselves. And that's pretty much it. I sped up and I made it. Uh, so here's the slide which I usually ask the audience about the questions, if there are any. If not, then thank you.